Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 21 of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock. And today, what I want to work on is some more logistics pipes, because last episode, I set up some stuff which was needlessly complex, and a bunch of people in the comment section pointed out how needlessly complex it was, and a couple of ways in which we could make our systems much more effective and much, much smaller than they were at the end of last episode. And that's what I'm going to work on in today's episode. But before we get into all of that the stuff that i've done since the end of last episode first things first i have added a bunch of these provider pipes to all of these chests over here you do need one on either side of the chest you can't just have them on one of the chests otherwise it'll only be able to access half of the inventory of the double chest uh, it's a little weird that way and i've also gone ahead and made duplicates of almost all of the machines that we have upstairs we now have another pulverizer another redstone furnace another induction smelter fluid transposer magma crucible we've got a sawmill which is actually our first sawmill uh, in the series i'll get to that in a second another metal farmer, another compressor, and two of these metal presses. I did take the one uh, from upstairs, so we now no longer have a metal press up here, but I don't really think it's going to be missed once we can automate all of our plates and all of our gears from downstairs. And what we're going to do today is make it so that we can automate these machines without the massive contraption that we built at the end of last episode, and we're going to do that using chassis pipes. So uh, chassis pipes are logistics pipes in which you can put modules, and these modules allow you to do a bunch of different stuff and the thing that I wasn't aware of when I made last episode was this crafting logistics pipes. I didn't know this existed and now that I do know it exists there's actually a much much easier way to set up all of this stuff because what you can do is you can put these crafting modules into those chassis pipes and if we look at the chassis pipes real quick here and you'll see there are multiple tiers of chassis pipes and the higher you get in the tier the more modules you can put in and therefore the more crafting recipes you can have within one individual pipe. Now I'm not quite sure how many modules you can put in the basic Mark 1 logistics chassis here, uh, but we'll make one real quick actually just to see what it's like. It needs three redstone, two iron, and one basic logistics pipe. I also made a bunch more of these basic logistics pipes since the end of last episode, and we'll also get onto replacing the golden transport pipes as well a little bit later on down the line because again, a bunch of people pointed out how those are not as good as some other pipes that we can use. Uh, but uh, to start with here, let me grab a little bit of redstone, some iron, and also what else do we need? We needed the, just the logistics pipe, and uh, let's see if I'm making ourselves one of these. So if we take a normal chassis pipe and we were to put it down anywhere in the world and open it up with a wrench, this guy has room for one module. Kind of useless in, in, in some regards, especially for crafting because if we're going to craft, we might as well use a crafting logistics pipe instead of just this Mark 1 chassis pipe. But uh, if we go ahead and jump all the way up to the logistics chassis Mark 5, this pipe is made with a logistics chassis Mark 4 and a diamond chipset. I did spend quite a bit of time since the end of last episode uh, leaving the assembly table running. We now have 19 diamond chipsets and they do take quite a long time and they are pretty expensive. It put quite a strain uh, on our power system here. We do need to work on upgrading this pretty soon, uh, but if we take that and we combine it up with some tier 4 logistics chassis pipes, which are just some iron, some gold, and some basic logistics pipes like so, or using an iron chipset, a golden chipset, and two iron, because we have such an abundance of iron and gold and our power situation is not as good as it could be, I'm going to use this top recipe instead of the bottom recipe because those chipsets take a lot more time and power to make than the iron and gold that we have up here. So, uh, if we go ahead and quickly grab some iron ingots and some gold ingots. We can go ahead and craft both of those up into a couple of tier 4 chassis pipes. Uh, for now, I'll just take 5 and then we'll craft all of those up into tier 5 chassis pipes like so. And now if you put these down in the world, we'll see that we get significantly more slots for modules to go in. We actually get a total of 8 module slots, which means that we can craft up to 8 items from this one pipe instead of having to have multiple pipes attached to one chest and then all those chests connected to other chests, which then feed down into other machines. So, if we were to go ahead and stick this down right on the back of this guy over here, right now it does absolutely nothing because it has no modules in whatsoever, but basically we're going to have one of these on every single one of these machines. We'll do it like that, of course we're going to make two more uh, for these and then two more for those. So we're going to need four more of those to add up for all of the machines here, but uh, what we're going to do now is work on making some of those crafting modules. And the way that we make these is with two redstone, one iron gear, one red dye, one blue dye, one lapis lazuli, as well as one blank module, and a blank module is made with two paper, two redstone, and one gold nugget. All fairly easy to do. And so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to bone meal up a bunch of sugar cane here, craft that all up into paper, get a bunch of rose red as well, doing the same method. We can use our rose red here uh, to plant some rose red seeds. I believe we've got some poppy seeds lying around, actually, uh, which we can bone meal up to get a bunch of rose red as well. Uh, and I'm going to get all the stuff that we need to make a bunch of these crafting modules, and I'll be back in a second. 
And a lot of time spent bone mealing later, and we now have two stacks of paper and a stack of rose red. So, uh, we should be able to come into here and make a stack of blank modules, and then use that stack of blank modules to make a stack of crafting modules. Uh, I did go ahead and make 64 iron gears. We do need two more stacks of redstone as well as a stack of lapis. And if we combine all that up in our crafting station, we get... A stack of crafting cards. Nice. Now, that was pretty expensive, but it does now mean that we can fill almost all of these slots in here with crafting cards. And by the way, you can just shift left click all of these in like so into almost all of these. We don't quite have enough uh, to get all of these filled up. I think we're going to need 72 crafting cards as opposed to 64 if we want to fill uh, every single one of the tier 5 chassis pipes. And by that, I mean one for this guy, one for this machine, and one for both of our metal pressers. But for now, uh, let's just work on the machines that we have over here, all of our thermal expansion machines what we can do is we can put up to eight crafting recipes into every single one by opening it up and then clicking on these little exclamation points to the left of the modules and then it has the exact same layout as the crafting pipe from before but instead of requiring a bunch of chests and a bunch of pipes and a bunch of stuff in order to get eight recipes into one machine we now need one pipe to give us eight recipes in one machine and we can still put multiple pipes onto one chest if we like i could always go ahead take this guy and stick one of oh do these not stack oh what the heck they don't stack after you've crafted them that is real annoying and something i should bear in mind in the future uh, but if i wanted to i could put another one down right about there and add up to 16 crafting recipes to the pulverizer i could of course then put one on the bottom up into 32 and if i wanted to i could move this system over here uh, across by one and put another one on the right hand side here and up it to 32 and if i really wanted to i could set up the exact same system that we had at the end of last episode but this time with these tier 5 logistics chassis pipes and get a ton of extra crafting recipes into every single one of my machines. I'm not going to do that just yet because I don't think, for now at least, that we're going to be using any more than 24 recipe slots for any given machine. And now the next challenge is to hook them all together and actually connect them to the logistics pipe system and to the power source, which is over here. And last episode, I told you guys that golden pipes were one of the best ways to do that. Turns out there is an even better pipe than the golden pipe, at least according to the people in the comment section. And when I checked it, uh, it is actually better. And that is the unrooted logistics pipe pipe this guy over here it basically works like a golden transport pipe but it's faster and it's a little bit cheaper as it does not require any gold just some iron some glass and some redstone uh, one thing to bear in mind is it does work in almost exactly the same way as the golden pipe especially in that it doesn't work very well with intersections so you do still have to make sure that every intersection is a basic logistics pipe like this one here and not an unrooted logistics pipe if you put an unrooted logistics pipe at an intersection it will do the exact same thing as a golden transport pipe or for build craft it'll just send it all over over the place and we'll just mess your system up completely or at the very least just slow it down quite a bit so uh, let's look into making a set of these to begin with here i'll probably go away and replace all of my golden pipes with these unrooted transport pipes in a second but for now let's just go ahead and craft up a few of those let's grab some redstone and some iron craft up a bunch of these guys over here that gets us two stacks of unrooted chassis pipes and so what i'm gonna do now guys i'm gonna go away i'm gonna replace all of my golden pipes with these unrooted transport pipes i'm also gonna connect up all of these new chassis pipes with these unrooted transport pipes I'll be back in a second. And there we go. A little while later, I've now replaced all of the golden pipes with unrooted transport pipes. I've connected up all of the machines and all of the chassis pipes over here with unrooted transport pipes. And I've even gone ahead and connected up all of our Britannia slash kind of farming chests over here with provider pipes and unrooted transport pipes. So now all of our chests and all of our storage, apart from the uh, caches over here that are storing our mob drops, which I might replace at some point with storage drawers just to make it a little bit easier in terms of logistical piping, because if we do it with storage drawers we can just put one controller in the middle and access all of them uh, but other than that all of our stuff is now connected up and if we were to go over to our request pipe over here and request for example uh, some apples we can go ahead and request 10 of those they'll come over we are running a little low on applesauce so we'll wait for those to come through you can see they come through pretty quickly just a little bit faster than those golden pipes before it and now if we craft that up with our pot that we currently don't have on us i believe it is in a chest up here it is indeed let me take that let me quickly make some more applesauce and what i want to work on now is i want to work on automating uh, some slightly harder crafting recipes so last episode we looked at basic crafting recipes and what i've done just now whilst i was putting down all the pipes is set up a, an example of a basic crafting recipe over here with the metal press in this chassis pipe we have a couple of these crafting modules here uh, set to make specific gears for example we've got iron i think we also have gold tin copper and bronze and then if we come over to our request pipe here real quick and once again go over 
to crafting only mode, we can see that we can now craft iron gears, gold gears, copper gears, tin gears, and bronze gears. Uh, however we like, we can go ahead and request one of each, and it will send all of the required items over to the metal press. The metal press will then press them into the required gears, put them through into this chest, and the final piece of the puzzle is just to have those gears then go back around to the original chest so they can go back into the system, and that would look something like this, not like that. And now all the gears will go straight back around and end up in there, and that should work out just perfectly. Now, it might be a little bit slow, uh, because I'm not quite sure how fast these machines are at sending stuff over there. Did that work correctly? I feel like it should have worked. We may, we may have an intersection that I have rooted wrongly somewhere. Let me try. Oh, no, they're over here. Oh, wow. Okay, so apparently we already have uh, all of them in our system. Let me go ahead and request more of those again. So I'll request one of each of these once again, apart from copper, because we've already got copper, uh, and we've already got bronze. But if I request those, that should go ahead and send all the stuff it needs. Look at this. So I'll fly in over to the metal press over here. The system will put them down. The reason why I have it set up like this, um, I tried it by just putting, I tried collecting the item duct directly to the metal press, and you might have seen it look like that uh, at the beginning of today's episode, but for, for some reason, these item ducts don't like to um, input directly into the metal press. I'm not quite sure why, and also, for some reason, that has uh, become a little backed up there, and I don't know what's causing that. Is that copper? That can't be copper. We didn't request any copper. But for some reason, the item ducts don't like to input directly into the metal press. And so now we have a chest that goes through to a hopper, which inputs to the metal press, which sends it back around, and eventually, we end up with all of our gears. Over here. Nice. Okay, so now that we've got the simple crafting recipes down, I want to start to look at some of the more complex crafting recipes. For example, those involving the Magma Crucible and the Fluid Transposer, because, uh, for example, if we wanted to automate the process of making some Signalum, uh, we would have to make it so that we can create destabilized redstone buckets, and to get that, we would have to work with both the Magma Crucible and the Fluid Transposer all within one craft, which is going to be a bit complex, and that's why I have the Magma Crucible and the Fluid Transposer both both set up here and connected to one chest. You'll notice there isn't a chest for the fluid transposer and the magma crucible. There is just the one chest with the one chassis pipe. And we're actually going to go ahead and I'm going to try and automate the process of making this signalum. And to do that, we're first going to have to automate the process of making the copper dust and the silver dust. Thankfully, that is like the easiest part of the whole craft. All we have to do for that is grab a little bit of copper, a little bit of silver, and automate both of those within the pulverizer. The pulverizer is probably one of the easiest machines to automate. Uh, Using the setup here, all we have to do, go into the chassis pipe and select one of the crafting modules. We'll start at the top here and we'll select copper. We'll go to the second one and we will select silver. Let's quickly pulverize both of those up into their dust counterparts. And then once that's done, all we got to do, take those both out, jump back into the chassis pipe and, of course, assign the outputs here. Uh, now telling the system that if we put copper ingots into this chest, you will get pulverized copper back. Uh, the pulverizer and, oh, and actually all thermal expansion machines are pretty cool in that they will automatically output to the inventory that you select. So if we come in here and look at the configuration, the top is set to orange, which is output, which means it will automatically push up and out and around through this pipe into this chest. We don't have to put uh, any kind of server one there to pull it out. It will just pull out automatically, which is pretty cool. So now we've got that, we move on to the hard bit of the, the crafting recipe, and that is automating the bucket of destabilized redstone. And so for that, we're going to have to send enough redstone to the magma crucible to fill a bucket of destabilized redstone. You can see here that one piece of redstone makes 100 millibuckets of a destabilized redstone, and we know that a thousand millibuckets equals one bucket worth of any fluid in the game. So we're gonna have to send 10 redstone dust as well as one bucket to the magma crucible slash fluid transposer chest in order to get a bucket of signalum back. So uh, let's go ahead and quickly grab 10 redstone and also grab a bucket. Do we have one on us? We do. We'll use that for example for now. Uh, I'm fairly certain we've got a couple more lying around in some of the chests upstairs. So let's come over to our chassis pipe and let's use uh, this top crafting card up here. And we want to say that if you send 10 redstone and one bucket to this pipe, that you will get a bucket full of destabilized redstone back. And the way that we're going to do that is by separating or using these uh, servos to determine where certain items are going to go once they reach that chest. So, for example, we want the redstone to come around and into the magma crucible, and then we also want the bucket to go directly into the fluid transpose. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have some pipes come around here like so. And I'm going to set this left side here to an input, and we want to make sure that both of these are turned off like so. You want to make sure uh, that the items do not end up in the sawmill or the chest behind the sawmill. And then I also want to make sure that we have this pipe go along like so. And again, make sure this pipe does not go into the magma crucible because this one here is going to carry our bucket around. We 
don't want to do what I just did there and get rid of the connection to the chest. What we want to do instead is connect up the hardened server like so. In this one, we want to whitelist a bucket, set it to always pull that out. And then in this one, we want to whitelist redstone. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there. Whitelist, pull out. We want to make sure that doesn't connect there because we don't want to go back through and into the system. And now all of the redstone that comes through into here will go round and into the magma crucible. The bucket will go directly round into the fluid transposer. And then finally, we want to have pipes that bring the finalized product back round into the chest. Again, making sure that all of the unwanted connections are taken care of like so. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I am going to set all of these uh, that are not wanted to uh, to off and what you can do real quick if you want to get rid if you want to turn all of the sides off is hold shift and double click on the middle icon there uh, we want the top to be an input which is blue and then we want the side here to be an output which is either red or I think orange works as well yeah orange also works uh, and so this system should be pretty much good to go to accept redstone in the bucket and turn it into destabilized redstone so let's test it out shall we we'll come over here but before we do that we do of course have to actually tell the system what it's making because right now it doesn't know what it's making with the redstone and the bucket so let's go ahead and throw our bucket in there wait for the magma crucible to turn the redstone into enough destabilized redstone we want to make sure that this here is set to the right uh, side as well. I'm going to make that blue as well. The bucket gets sent around, and the bucket should end up in this chest just nicely. And because all of these servers here are whitelisted, the bucket will not get pulled out. Instead, it will be pulled by the logistics chassis pipe around and where it needs to go. So let's come in here, and let's finalize it by setting the output to the bucket of the stabilized redstone. And now, if I was to come back over to our request pipe, and I was to, for example, uh, request 10 buckets of a destabilized redstone, uh, we're missing four buckets. I don't know if that craft will automatically do the other six. I think it might, but I also could be completely wrong, and it looks like it doesn't. So, uh, let's come back over. Apparently, we have six buckets in our system. So, uh, let's request a craft of, let's say, five uh, instead of six, because five is a much nicer number. We request five. It should send 50 redstone and five buckets round into that chest, and then send five buckets of destabilized redstone back into that request pipe there. And then, of course, the final part of the whole setup here is actually crafting the signal and blend, or the second to last part. Obviously, the last part is going to be smelting that signal and blend into a signal and ink. But in order to craft the signal and blend here, we have to go over to one of these crafting tables. You'll notice I set up a bunch of these as well between episodes. These, unfortunately, uh, as far as I know, cannot accept chassis pipes. And so we do have to use the normal crafting logistics pipes because each one of these can only hold one recipe. And for this, we're going to say that a bucket of destabilized redstone with three copper dust like so and one pulverized silver equals signal and blend. And it knows that there. Uh, and so what I want to do with the crafting pipe is say the exact same thing. One bucket of destabilized redstone, three copper dust like so. By the way, you can right click to increase the amount uh, if you don't quite have that many in your inventory and one silver dust. And the output of course is going to be signal and blend. So let me quickly just grab four of these signal and ingots because we currently don't have any signal and blend. Let's just pulverize four of these up real quick in here. And then once we've got four signal and blend, we can again come back over to whichever one of these I set this up in. It was the first one and set the output to signal and blend. Nice. And then finally, of course, the last thing we want to do is come over to our redstone furnace here, select the crafting module, tell it that the input is signalum like so, and then tell it that the output is, of course, signalum ingots like so. Also, I should really look into upgrading these machines because right now these guys uh, are all running at default speed. I should upgrade them like the ones upstairs and maybe add some more uh, speed upgrades into them to make them just a little bit faster. Uh, but now we should have fully automated the process of making... Ooh, why do you have excess destabilized redstone? That is not how it's supposed to be. Um... There shouldn't be... We got five... We got four buckets worth. So one of the buckets didn't make it... Actually, two of the buckets didn't make it down there? Do we have two buckets lying around? The system's a little bit janky. And hopefully we don't have two extra buckets. It's a little bit janky, but don't worry about it. It should, it should work just fine hopefully at some point. Um, so now let's go ahead and try it. Okay, so I did a few tests and the Signalum didn't quite craft as easily as I would have liked, but that's because there were a few issues uh, with my current setup. The first one is that my pulverizer and redstone furnace setup was incorrect. Uh, instead of having the server here pull out of the machine, or instead of not having a server at all, uh, before we had it so the pulverizer would output to the top and send stuff back around to the chest, instead, what we need to do is we need to have stuff come out of the chest, get pulled up through the pipes and into the pulverizer, and then set the back to an output to get stuff to go out of the chest, and then back into the pulverizer. The way we had it before, there was no way to get stuff out of the chest and into the pulverizer. The exact same was true 
of the redstone furnace. The other issue that we currently still have is over here. This crafting logistics pipe uh, is currently set to one bucket of destabilized redstone, three copper, and one silver makes one signal and blend, when really it should make four signal and blend, so that if we go over here and request, say, four signal, it doesn't try sending four buckets, or it doesn't try crafting four buckets of destabilized redstone to make those four signal ingots. Uh, but now that all of that is taken care of, we should be able uh, to come over here and easily request one ingot worth of a signal. So I'm going to request that. That should send 10 redstone and one bucket round to here. That should quickly make the bucket of destabilized redstone. And it did. Once that's done, that should go back around and then should get sent over to this table over here. We already have uh, the copper in here. We don't quite have the silver. Is the silver being worked on or is the silver just not coming? Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's done. It's done. And then the signal is being cooked up. And there we go. It's being sent back around and it should end up uh, over here. Uh, it did spit out, by the looks of things, it did spit out um, the excess signal. And because we only asked for one ingot, it only made us one ingot and therefore spat out the rest of it. Uh, one thing we are going to have to do is set up some uh, set up a system to where all of our excess items can go back to a chest. Because right now, all of the pipes that are on our inventories, like this one here and all these ones over here, are all provider pipes, which means the system can't put items into our inventories. It couldn't currently pull them out but it can't put them in. And so what we need to do is replace some of these provider logistics pipes with chassis pipes that have provider modules in, but also have like maybe an item sync module in. Uh, the item sync module just lets you kind of send stuff to that chest, if that makes sense. Uh, so for example, if we come back over here, let's quickly go ahead and whip up another chassis pipe. We don't need a tier five chassis pipe. We could probably get away with a tier four chassis pipe. I kind of like tier four uh, because it's a nice easy one to make and it has a lot of slots. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab two more gold, quickly craft up a tier 4 chassis pipe and stick this on the back of, for example, this chest here. And now, uh, if we put a supplier, sorry, a provider pipe into there, as well as an item sync pipe, when we try and craft another signalum, the excess signalum blend should go directly to this chest. And then in future, if we want to make more signalum, uh, instead of going ahead and doing the whole recipe again, it will just take the signalum blend out of this chest and put it into the redstone furnace. Uh, so, for the item sync module, let's go back over to modules real quick. Uh, and for the item sync module, we need an iron gear, another blank module, two redstone, and two green dye. I don't know if we currently have what it takes to make green dye, but I do know for a fact that we have a ton, like way too many cactus seeds lying around in our storage drawers. So getting cactus and then therefore getting the uh, the, the green dye should be fairly easy. Uh, let me just go away and grab all this stuff real quick. All right, so now that we've got all of the required items, let's make an item sync module and let's make a provider module. And let's see if memory serves me correct. I'm pretty sure that the item sync module should allow items to be deposited into this chest. So we put both those into there. Let's go back down and let's request one more signalum ingot. Again, it should do the exact same stuff. It should craft up another bucket of destabilized redstone, which it is doing. Is that copper? Oh, yeah, it's making the copper dust, of course. Uh, it should craft up one more bucket of destabilized redstone. Unless we already had one. We already had one. Okay, so it's going to do that. Uh, that should then do silver, which it's doing. Bring it back around once the copper and silver are both done. Ooh, again, it ended up here. Mm. That is not good. Oh, it worked. It worked. Okay. So, uh, all I changed there, you'll see now the remaining three signal and blend did actually this time end up in the chest. All I did was inside here, you got to item sync module. This default root option over here is set to no by default. And uh, if you change that to yes, all of the items will default uh, to this chest. And what I will probably do is replace most of these pipes uh, with chassis pipes so we can have them all as provider pipes and as item sync so that all the items will try and go to these chests uh, where possible. I'll also try and probably make these chests uh, much bigger in storage using iron chests. We can make them iron chests, maybe gold chests, maybe even diamond chests if they get that full. Uh, but that is how the system is going to work. And so what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to create a bunch more crafting recipes for all these machines. And I'll be back in a second. And finally, quite a while later, I've added a bunch more crafting recipes to all of these machines, as well as a few more crafting recipes over here to the logistics crafting tables. And now if we look finally inside of our request logistics pipe, change it over to craft, you can see that we can now craft most of the gears, a lot of the ingots that require uh, craft 
crafting in the induction furnace, this guy uh, over here. This one's the only other machine apart from like kind of this setup here that has a bit of a different setup. And that's because you need to be specific on where the, uh, for instance, if we're making invar, we need to be specific on where the iron and the invar goes. We don't want iron going into here and here. And so in configuration, you want to make sure you set one side to green, one side to purple. And then on your filters here, on your uh, servers, you want to make sure you filter certain items to go one way and certain items to go the other way. For example, here we have ferrous that will go this way and iron that will go this way. So we never end up with both sides filled with iron and we never end up with a bit of a backed up system and we don't have to come and fix it ourselves, which is the whole end game of having automation. We don't want to have to do things on our own. But yeah, we now have a nice amount of automated stuff. Also, Cliffhanger has come to say hello, but we have a nice amount of automated stuff. What I'm going to do between episodes is work on a couple more things. I haven't done uh, any of the IC2 stuff yet, so all of my Industrial Craft 2 machines over here uh, are still not working for auto crafting stuff. Uh, there are some upgrades we can make that are going to make this a little bit easier, like the auto eject upgrade, uh, which I'll probably talk about at the beginning of next episode because I'll probably make it between episodes uh, and use it to, uh, to automate this a little bit. We're also uh, still going to need probably another metal farmer, which I'll most likely put here uh, so that we can use one of them for extruding and one of them for rolling. And we might even need one for cutting as well. Uh, we might not need rolling because we're making plates over here, but at the same time, uh, item casing is made in rolling as well. So I might have to make two more of these, uh, put like one here and then maybe like one on the other side as well. But with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Vault Skyblock there. Next episode, we'll come back. We'll probably work on something that isn't logistics pipes. Take a bit of a break. There is more stuff we can do with it, uh, but we've done it for three episodes straight now. We'd like to try something a little bit different, uh, but we will definitely come back to it at some point in the near future. As always, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time. Yeah.